Hello. Regular viewers to my channel will have seen me use this quite a lot. It's uh, a capacitance and equivalent series resistance meter from Peak Electronics. This is an older model ESR60. And I've modified this, I do this in a previous video, with a foot switch so that I can operate it. Uh, it's especially handy if you're working on a piece of equipment and you're testing in circuit. You can put the probes on a capacitor on a board and then press that button. Now, that's capacitance only. Another handy little tool I have, these things are readily available on eBay. Uh, it's just a, a little uh, semiconductor device tester and it'll give you pinout and some basic measurements such as uh, gain. Now, uh, there's a very good channel uh, I recommend you watch it if you're not already a subscriber, is uh, Curious Mark and he does a great deal of uh, electronic repair uh, on all kinds of fascinating equipment. He has a sophisticated curve tracer, which is uh, ideal for testing lots of semiconductor devices' performance. gives you so much more than just gain. You can match transistors uh, and see if components are breaking down in a much more sophisticated way than a simple tester. Now, such a machine is way too expensive and way too bulky for my little workshop here. But uh, it would be lovely if there was something sort of in between that uh, was compact but could do curve tracing. Special delivery! Ooh, thank you. I wonder what's in this. So this is the uh, DCA75 from Peak. have a very good user manual here. Usually I've got bipolar transistors, Zenas, that sort of thing. Here's the machine itself. Uh, a USB cable and a USB stick, which presumably has the uh, Windows software. And just three terminals. Now, this can't be used for testing in circuit. You really need to get your components out of circuit, or at least two of the three terminals uh, isolated. Is it ready to run? Yes. So let's just uh, put that on this simple uh, NPN transistor and see what we get. Right. That's told us everything we need to know, but what about curve tracing I keep going on about? Well, that's where we can learn more. Let's load the software on PC and plug it in. There's a file before you do anything PDF, so we'd better start with that, hadn't we? Before you plug into your PC, you must read this. Don't plug your device into your computer until you've installed the software. You can run it from the uh, USB drive or it gives you a link to download the latest version. I think we'll do that. Okay, so we've started the software. Let's uh, plug it in with this uh, very high quality USB cable. But it's not USB-C, I see. It's um, micro USB. The DCO firmware is not correct for this version. Uh, Program DCO now, yes. Okay. Now we have the test for results from the transistor that I have plug, uh, connected to it. Let's start a set of curve traces for the gain. It's clearly much slower than the sort of thing that Curious Mark uses. But we do get a useful set of results for this component. OK, so we have curve traces for collector current versus collector emitter voltage. Uh, now let's export that. Data, save, graph, data. And then copy that data into your favourite spreadsheet. Having dropped the data into spreadsheet, this is OpenOffice. Uh, I'm looking at, say, the 4 microamp base current. Uh, and we collect the pair of columns, which is VCE and IC. So we've got those. And we could insert a chart. 
and scatter gives you the results you want uh, with lines, smooth lines, even nicer. And we finish up with quite a good uh, plot there for just that base current. But then how would we drop in the data for, say, the 8 microamp uh, base current? So if I grab that data and drop it into here, well, it updates it for the 8 microamps, but it's not plotting them all together, which is a bit of a shame. So how could I work around that? Uh, you know, are you really good with spreadsheets? So uh, one thing I've tried is if I grab the data from one of these pairs of columns and copy and drop it into the next column along, then now we have two sets, two curves. And if I drop that into our chart, well, sort of works, uh, but it goes a bit wibbly wobbly at the end because of course it's returning back to zero. Now if we uh, change the chart type to just points, go to the smooth lines, then we do have uh, something that looks right, but it would be a right pain in the ass to have to concatenate all the different base currents like this. And especially when you're in this area, you wouldn't be able to see which uh, plot is which set of data. So if somebody is really good at spreadsheets and can provide a sample spreadsheet which will take this block of data which is like the default layout for the IC versus VCE of a, a bipolar transistor. If somebody can create a spreadsheet that takes this default data and makes up a chart with all of the individual curves all nicely labeled uh, that would be wonderful and if you can let me have that I'll provide it a link to it in the uh, notes below it's a pity really that the manufacturer didn't provide that because it's all well and good saying well here's the data stick it in a spreadsheet and do with it what you will but if it's not presented in a layout that's easy to uh, to visualize it's a little bit non-ideal so uh, we are calling on spreadsheet experts to help us out on this one, please. So we've got here collector current versus collector emitter voltage. We can also get graphs for other parameters of this transistor. In fact, I think we can look at what graphs are available for different components here. Here we go. So for bipolar transistors, we have a whole range of them available. And then for MOSFETs and uh, insulated gates, transistors, JFETs, and voltage regulator. I'd like to see the voltage regulator one. Let's have a go at that. So um, we'll take this component off and put on one of our voltage regulators. Uh, uh, LM317 does it identify it as a voltage regulator is the first thing yes it does it says it's a voltage regulator um, but it says V out 1.602 volts which may be true when that's grounded but actually it's a variable regulator isn't it the 317 uh, so let's have a look at the graphs we get for this one plot it so that's voltage out versus voltage in uh, it's a bit of a mess I think that's because we don't really have we're not configuring it properly it's a variable voltage regulator uh, unless you understand differently I don't think that's right okay let's try a fixed regulator uh, 78 what's that it's a 7908 7808 that should be straightforward shouldn't it It says no component detected. What, a 7808? What's wrong? What is your regulators? Page 29. With outputs of less than 8 volts. Well, it is 8 volts. 
so it can't even measure an 8 volt regulator. So in other words, it's only really useful for 5 volt and you know, one, uh, 3 volt and very, very small voltage regulators. Oh, well, let's see if I've got a 5 volt regulator to hand. I have a 7905, that's a negative voltage regulator to hand. Let's give that a whirl. No component detected. 7905. Is this not working? All right, I have a rather shabby uh, 7805 component here. It's got some capacitors on it, which I hope won't matter. Let's uh, try that one. No component detected. Let's just check the 7905. I'm going to put a negative voltage in, so ground is the positive of my power supply. And then uh, pin 2 is voltage in, which will be anything over about minus 7 volts. And pin 3, the output should be minus 5 volts. So I'm putting about minus 8 volts in. So I measure that there. Minus 8 volts. And the output, minus 4.9 it's reading. So that voltage regulator is working just fine. That's on no load or what have you, but you know, that's a negative voltage regulator and that's working just fine. And we hook it back up to this tester, ask it again to do a test. No component detected. There's something seriously wrong with this thing, isn't there? Well, while we're here, let's try a few other components. We have a old fashioned type red LED. So it's two terminals, of course correctly identified as an LED. I don't know if there's any graphs to be had for that. No, no graphs to be had for that one. Okay, so it got that right. How about this? I think it's a voltage source, isn't it? U574. Let's look that one up. Okay, that may not be a component it's able to identify. Let's see if it can do anything with that. It thinks it's just a diode. Oh well. How about a germanium transistor? Yes, correctly identified as germanium as well and we can get a set of plots for that. Do you know, I think what it does, yes, I'm right. If you don't clear the data from a previous plot, it leaves it on the display. That's ideal for if you're trying to match transistors. So you can have them both on the display at once. Obviously you can't match a silicon and a germanium, uh, but no, that's that's quite good, I like that. Has a thyristor, one amp thyristor. No component detected. Oh, there's another one of them, is it? We're having a few no component detecteds, aren't we? 79L12. Well, if it's not good for regulators um, beyond 8 volts, it's not going to make anything of this, is it? But we'll pr try it just to prove the point. No component detected. No, okay. That one's understandable. OK, let's try to identify this component. It's marked something like BR something illegible 03, J03. So I don't know what it is. It would be good if this machine can identify what kind of component it is. It's a thyristor. Good, it got that right. Let's try a 6.2 volt 1 watt Zener diode. Uh, I had to install one of these in my great big massage chair recently and it's measuring 6.159 so that's very good. Can we get any plots for that? Rosina? No. Can we? Yes, PN Junction I think. There we go. Oh, we're not really getting the Zena diode voltage I was looking for. That's the plot that I've expected. So that's giving me the forward voltage, but I want the uh, 
reverse voltage, breakdown voltage, and it doesn't seem to do that. Which is clearly the most important measurement for a Zener diode, isn't it? So okay, it detected it, but it was a little bit limited in the plots. And if I try something like, this is a 30 volt Zener diode, it doesn't, doesn't detect that as a Zener, just thinks it's an ordinary diode. So what do you think of this? In some ways it seems quite helpful, but in other ways it feels like it could just have been a bit better. It would have been great if it could have gone to higher voltages, higher test voltages, even if you had to go through a menu to say, I understand, you know, there's risks, but go up to at least sort of 20 volts or something to better test regulators and zeners. I'm surprised you don't get a plot of zener breakdown voltage. Uh, and I'm surprised it failed to detect so many regular ordinary components like a 7905 regulator that the manual says it should be able to detect. So um, it's not brilliant, but maybe some of these things can be overcome with software and firmware updates. Tell me what you think if you own one of these. I'll do plenty of content about audio and video technology and some electronics in the near future. Bye for now.